It's Chibi here, umpcportal.com with the Toshiba WT8. Hello everyone with the greasy screen. Listen, I just want to tell you the three ways you can connect a display to the Toshiba WT8. That's the Encore WT8, it's a Bay Trail T based device, 8 inches, 1280 by 800 screen, uh, HDMI out, USB out, and mirror cast. And that gives you a, a clue as to how you can possibly get an external display on this. Now we've got an external display running now, we're running a demo uh, film and we're doing it over a display adapter. Now this is a dis display link USB 3 to display uh, HDMI adapter. So what's happening here is uh, it is taking uh, a stream from some drivers installed in here that are creating a virtual screen and it's converting it to HDMI. Now obviously there's a little bit of a CPU uh, CPU overhead here as it converts the uh, stream from the virtual screen into HDMI uh, and that actually in some cases can go pretty high. 30% uh, plus I've measured on some YouTube videos so be aware that display link on Bay Trail it's probably not the best solution, although it does work. And I think if you're just uh, doing, if you're just doing office type work, I don't think the uh, overhead is going to be that serious. I'm going to show you now exactly what's going on. Here's the Display Link Manager application, and you can see where the the CPU overhead is only at 1.7% there. I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start that video over on the side there. Now it won't be doing full screen, uh, but you can see that it's running now already at 20%. And as I make that bigger, you'll probably see the uh, CPU rate go up. We are now at 40%, 35% CPU utilization. So, displaying adapters on on uh, Bay Trail T, probably not for videos, um, although of course it will play back videos. The other thing to notice is that the frame rate is slightly reduced and compressed. So if you're running HD videos, it's a compressed video stream and you will it's a lossy compressed video stream, so you need to bear that in mind. Right, let us switch to the second method here. Now this is a an Action Tech um, dis, uh, Miracast Wide Eye Adapter. It's just a little dongle here. It's got HDMI out. It's got a USB port on it. it looks pretty ugly. Power in there. So what I'm going to do, just going to grab that HDMI there. I'm going to plug it into the back of this, and he, he does it while holding the camera. Ah, bear in my, bear, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. There it is. Oh, in there. Right. <laughs> we've done that. Good. So now we've got um, a display link adapter connected to the screen. Now that brings up a sort of welcome screen. What we need to do now is go to the tablet and uh, we can just go to devices and we can go to project. And I have already connected to this screen before via the Miracast adapter. So what I'm going to do now is just connect the previously um, paired screen and there we go uh, let's get that uh, in focus there what on earth is happening there with the focus come on baby huh? auto focus has gone up the spout why is that hey welcome back so there we go now um, again a little bit of a CPU uh, overhead I believe with this but I don't think it's um, as much as with the USB 3.0 adapter. Now the disadvantage here is that the latency is quite high. You can move the mouse and um, it's about 100 to 150 milliseconds I believe which does make it a little bit awkward uh, on using the mouse a lot. So the disadvantage here is that um, the latency is going to make it unusable for gaming and also I would say for office work especially if you're doing a lot of sort of table work on, on Excel. Um, bear in mind also that it's a compressed stream over Wi-Fi so you will get the video compression it will be you can get 30 frames a second I think it will, there's even a 50 frames or a 60 frames per sec second support now but 
Um, if you've got a lot of Wi-Fi smog in your area, the quality of the connection may not be good enough to give you a really good quality output. Now, let's just um, let's just run that uh, that video again just to show you what sort of um, quality we're getting. And uh, whoops, let's uh, do that again. We'll play it with uh, Windows Media Player. Now it looks to me like there's quite a bit of compression in in the in the uh, example I'm using here. I liken it to downscaling from 1080p to 720p. Um, this is not a 1080p video, but it does give you an idea of uh, whether it's smooth, and it is pretty smooth on local files. The problem is on YouTube files that are coming over Wi-Fi you've basically got too much going over Wi-Fi on this Wi-Fi module. This is, I think, only a 2.4 gigahertz single channel solution, so bear that in mind. Um, I think we've got some driver downloads going on here as well. But there's not the CPU overhead that you get with the USB adapter. So that's a nice solution for sitting on the sofa and just sort of throwing images and videos onto a big screen. I, I like that uh, solution. And of course, the final uh, solution would be to... Obviously, the third method is to go pure and take the HDMI output directly from the device and feed that into your monitor. Now, clearly, you're going to get the best connectivity here. You're going to get full frame rate, no latency, and no CPU overhead as well. So if you can, always take the HDMI output from the device to the screen. Now there's one reason you might not want to do that, and there's one reason I think I might be using the USB 3 adapter is because of devices like this. Not the laptop, but the docking station. This is a USB docking station. One plug connects uh, the screen and all the USB devices like the keyboard, mouse, uh, external drive and all sorts of stuff like that. And so for sort of general browsing and office work, I find that to be quite a nice sort of plug and play solution. So there you were, Miracast. That will bring you your video over in a reasonable quality. It doesn't have a CPU overhead and that's nice if you've got a huge screen over the other side of the room or a projector you can um, just connect wirelessly to that. Second one is the USB 3 uh, display adapter. Now bear in mind, actually, the USB port on this is USB 2, not USB 3. So you're not getting the full capability and speed of the USB uh, 3 display adapter, but obviously it drops back to USB 2 support. Third option then is the best quality, and that is the micro HDMI port by the cable or the adapter for your other cables and uh, use the built-in micro HDMI. That's it, we're using the Toshiba WT8 Bay Trail tablet um, with the Z3740 uh, CPU inside. Miracast support and of course the USB 2 port on the top. One note on that USB 2 port, there is actually USB 3 inside the device but it only seems to come out on a USB 2 port which is very, very disappointing. There you go. Thanks for watching. My name's Chippy, at Chippy on Twitter, UMC Portal, ultrabooknews.com. Any questions? Drop them below. I'll see if I can answer them as soon as I can. Sorry for the messy screen here.